G'day guys, how's it going? Welcome to another Peaks Fishing and we've got a weather window tomorrow, probably four hours or five hours of what they're saying is going to be five knots. So I've um, got a couple of things to show you today. One is um, got this sent up from Peter from Tide Tackle and he's made these colours uh, especially for me. So these are they. Now there's a couple of ways to fish these. You can fish these exactly like you would with a normal uh, Kabura lure of course. Uh, just run them down you know, like you normally would. But what he showed me and uh, was of interest is he also uses them uh, on jig head. So pretty much you just grab it. It's got a little little piece there and you can grab a jig head. You can grab a jig head like EA and pretty much you know thread it through there, push it down so it comes right back and you can fish them like that or you can fish them like that with a soft bait on. So yeah, a couple of different options. And as I say, Peter made these ones up for me and I just, I love the colors. It's like a red, red and black, silver and black, you know, uh, what I think will be a good winter color. But we'll find out tomorrow. Uh, the other thing is this one here is just a, what I like about these is they're really bushy, very, very bushy, lots of movement, lots of action there, so. Uh, thank you, Peter. I'm going to try these tomorrow. It is winter time, so if they don't work, I'm not uh, going to give up on them by any means because these have got a lot of potential. So that's uh, Peter from Tide Tackle, and you can check him out on Facebook. Right, the other thing I've got to show you is uh, I've been introduced to Velcro by John Greeny, so I've got Velcro all over the thing now, so I can, when I'm not moving on the ski, you just want to hold things, I can just put these things down onto Velcro. Cunning idea, I don't know why I didn't think of it myself. And I'll just take you over and show you some of the uh, changes to the ski. So, the first thing is, I last week, uh, you might have seen the video last week, if you haven't, check it out. Um, I got hammered by a big wave. It's, on film it never looks, it never looks as big as it, you know, they actually are, but uh, it turned this eyelet inside out, it whipped for about two days, but I took a lot of water over the top of the ski, so the GPS got a bit, uh, went a bit wonky. Um, I've sorted out now, I've just taken all the plugs off and put, uh, you know, protectant on there and cleaned them and got the salt water off and it's working fine, but I got this thing, thanks to John Greeny put me onto this. John, if you're watching, thank you. This will do the job nicely. It's from Rustler, Rustler, and these are purpose made. You tell them what sort of sized uh, machine uh, machine GPS you've got and they have ones they got the these patterns to suit each thing so they, they just go on with a velcro very easy to put on but uh, you know that'll keep the water off beautifully uh, I bought myself a handle bag for more storage so I've got all my lures in there and bits and pieces that's gonna be pretty good um, I'm still gonna be using the jet ski uh, sorry the uh, esky as well but, um, and then what I've done is taken the radio that was here, that got uh, damaged. I've taken it off and put it in here. So that's down inside the glove box there. Sean Corey, Leave a jacket. Okay. You see a that's a terrible ad, never mind. Uh, and down here there is a, get you right in there, there's a microphone, just sits, sits there. Uh, so what was happening, because my VHF was sitting like that, the water was building up in the microphone there and dripping through and just shorting things out. So GME replaced it and I said to them I will move it into a waterproof position on the ski, which I've done. And I think they've been very good to me. That's the second one they've replaced. So I don't want to abuse uh, that relationship by any means because they've been so uh, so kind and, and looked after me well. So now it's out of the way. I don't need to worry about it anymore. Um, they told me if I'd mounted it horizontally, is that horizontally or vertically? I always get the two mixed up. Either way, if it was mounted like that, the water wouldn't have sat and it would have been absolutely fine. So just something to note, if you've got one of those things here, the GMEs there, they're a brilliant, brilliant phone, uh, VHF, sorry, not a phone, and just be careful the water's not sitting on the microphone there, okay? Right, there's the old Esky there, ready to go on, um, and that's really the main guts of it for now, so... I will um, get organised. Now it's going to be cold in the morning. It's going to be probably seven degrees they are forecasting. So, uh, and we've got a southerly wind uh, picking up. That's why it's got colder. So, should be a chilly start, but it'll be good. Okay, I'll see you in the morning. Bye. Good morning, guys. 
it's a bit uh, fresher than anticipated. It's five degrees, so it's going to be you know, quite a nippy trip out. But uh, on the way down to the ramp, I uh, just want to do a couple of things. One is a shout out to Kevin from Ski MD, who uh, is getting prostate cancer removed this week uh, in surgery. So I think it's actually today. So all the best, Kevin, from everyone in the ski community. You do a great, uh, a great job, and we'll see you back real soon you know, servicing and fixing our skis once again so all the best for Kevin and guys just a little you know thing for yourself uh, get a blood test get the PSA checked regularly on your prostate that's how Kevin's um, Kevin's illness was picked up so that's worthwhile doing I did mine when I was speaking to Kevin about it I went the day after and got mine done yeah, so make sure you get that done. Now this week's short history, this is my great uncle Malcolm who'd passed away in the late 60s. Now he was born in 1880 in Opotiki, which is in the Bay of Plenty. And Malcolm spoke fluent Māori. I can remember as a child going to his home and he had a whole range of Māori artifacts in there, which are all now down in the Wellington archives. Um, he was an interesting character, but what he's most famous for was for spooking Tikuti's horse. Now Tikuti was a Maori leader and he came through Opotiki in the 1880s. Uh, my great uncle ran out in front of his horse, spooked the horse, Tikuti <laughs> fell off and then uh, Tikuti got you know very 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 upset with him as you could imagine. So my uncle ran off home you know very frightened. So in 1968 the Auckland Star which is now redundant um, did an article about this and said, you know, he fell foul of Tikuti and lived to tell because Tikuti was a pretty infamous uh, warrior. As I say, a lot of conflict over his life with all different types of people. And that was what the story was about there. So that got me interested in Tikuti. And I sort of did a bit of research there and found out that he had a very, very interesting life. As I said, lots of conflict. But he also formed a church, which is still going today, um, called the Ringatu Church. And that's the uh, logo type symbol from there. That's the original flag that he had uh, in, the, in that time. And if you go into Auckland Museum, that is the chest that Tikuti used to travel with and a couple of his guns there in the background because he you know, did have a lot of conflicts over his lifetime before he... Um, you know, was um, turned into a religious preacher. So, and that's his actual handgun that he uh, travelled with as well. So, you know, super interesting character. Uh, lots of history around Tikuti that you can have a look at. Um, I just found it really fascinating. So, here we are. We'll get back into the video now. This is me sort of coming up on the beach and getting ready to launch. Well, as you can see, it's a beautiful morning in Auckland. We've got 15 knots of southerly breeze at the moment, meant to be dropping away to five knots. So coming up, um, I've got some seals to show you. There's three seals uh, playing behind the noises up in the rocks. So I had a look at them. And you can see what happened to the wind forecast of five knots. All that is coming up. So I'll do a voiceover for this because uh, by this stage, I've just got out of the spot now. The wind was up to about 19 knots by now and you can't hear a word I'm saying, it's just all wind noise. So uh, yeah, not what was forecast. So what I thought I would do is just sneak in behind the islands there on the left hand side and just get a bit of protection out of the wind and wait for it to drop off, um, you know, down to the promised five knots. So when it's windy like this, it just makes it quite challenging for fishing. You've, uh, you know, you're drifting that fast. Uh, you can't really do your spots for it very well at all. So when I came around, beautifully sheltered, as you can see, I thought I saw a dead bird in the water. So I went over to have a bit of an inspection. Yeah, it's a seal. There it is, it's a seal. How amazing. I've never ever seen a seal in Auckland before, so... That one's definitely a seal. He's just lying on the side having a fish. So we'll leave him alone, but... Uh, comment below if you've ever seen a seal in Auckland before. Because I never have. There he is over there now. So he may be, uh, there is a leopard seal that lives out here. I heard, oh, there's another one there. Oh, there's two of them. Oh, 
There's another one just on the rocks over here, but he's, he's just gone in behind the rocks, so uh, and, and here he's just over here. Oh, there's there, two of them in the water, and one over there, there's three of them. Wow. Okay, well that's a real thrill. I'll, uh, I'm going to move out here a bit, and uh, I just don't want to interrupt their, uh, interrupt the seals too much. So I'll just paint a sort of picture of what was happening on the day. So we had uh, a southerly wind coming through this way here, incoming tide coming this way, and the forecast of five knots never eventuated. So we had about 20 knots of wind of southerly, and it was gusting about 24, and then we had the incoming tide. So what I decided to do was to tuck in behind Otata Island, which is there, and that's where I saw the seals, beautifully sheltered there from the southerly wind, as you saw. And pretty much waited out, hoping that these, you know, the five knot, five knot forecast would occur. But as I sort of listened to the forecast, um, listened to the live feeds, Terry Island up here was actually up to about 27 knots gusting at one stage. So I sort of calculated it wasn't going to drop off anytime soon. And I thought, well, the best thing I can do is just uh, go and do a bit of wash fishing in here, just try it. So I tried there, it was just too rough and too windy. So I ended up sneaking in just to the spot just here. And I caught a 35 centimeter snapper on the wash fishing. Um, as usual, before filming, I checked the GoPro, ba uh, GoPro battery, which so showed 46%. And of course, uh, started filming, and yeah, within sort of 30 seconds, it was down to zero and gone. So that was the end of that footage. But I got a nice 35 centimeter fish. I fought hard for that fish. I, so uh, anyway, don't give up on the video just yet. I've got some more footage for you. It's gonna be wet. Wet ride. Woo. Well, guys, thanks for watching. That was a uh, yeah, quite a tough day fishing. Um, however. You know, I have got these two beautiful, beautiful, look at that shiny, lovely, beautiful, fresh snapper. So, you know, that was a hard-earned fish, and that is going to taste amazing, because uh, I worked hard for that. But uh, not often does Predict Wind get it so wrong, and they certainly got it really wrong yesterday. They forecast five knots, and... Uh, Terry there was peaking I think around 28 knots at one stage it was pretty windy as you saw and wind against tide quite a big tide yesterday so yeah got a bit lumpy but uh, and the fishing was just it's in those conditions it's just so hard you don't know if you're on the bottom near the bottom or anywhere you're sort of moving that fast but anyway um, I was able to get one uh, snapper through my wash fishing thank goodness the old GoPro did its usual thing apologies for that uh, it cut out at the opportune time but we got to see some seals anyway appreciate you watching if you haven't subscribed please do hit the notification bell and you'll get notified when i put a new video out so in the meantime i am going to fang on these right now thanks a lot bye for now